It's Tuesday night, my man. What is yeah, up? Bro, uh, Taco Ball Tuesday, baby. Taco Ball. That is a beautiful hoodie, by the way. That is so fresh, so clean. Oh, With the BZ. The black lettering. Oh, I love it. With the purple. I love it. The logo right in the middle. Oh, that's so nice. Where where can where can I find something like that, Justin? Well, you can always find stuff at the Taco Bell shop online, but uh, I find my best Taco Bell gear at the, the local TJ Maxx's and the Marshalls. They always got something. Uh, and every once in a while, Target has a Taco Bell shirt yeah. in their mix of graphic tees. Man, there's it must be something about Pittsburgh area shops like here in Charlotte. Never seen Taco Bell apparel yeah i don't know what it is i will be on the lookout for you next time i'm there <laughs> yeah man i would pay you gratuitously for for a hoodie like that uh, that'd be awesome extra large that, that'd be my size extra large oh, i was gonna go large that would have shorted you uh, that way you could show off the old midriff to uh all the boys <laughs> at f3 <laughs> That too, that too. Oh, man. So, Justin, we are 13, 14, 15 games in the season for teams. And Roughly, yeah. um, it has been a surprising start to the season so far for I, a variety I, of reasons. I would say so. <laughs> so I think, I think what, what we need to talk about tonight, we got to get into – what teams so far we see is underperforming and then what teams are overperforming. So, um, but before we do, who, who's that, uh, that strapping young lad behind you in the picture there? Who's, who, who are we looking at? Bro, Evan Mobley oh, in the Ed. Meg's Tate city edition, city edition looking fresh. And I was talking to you a bit about this, but, uh, he's on, he's going on injury for, a few weeks, uh, maybe longer, hopefully not longer. I know with, with the bigger players, it takes a little longer to recover from some of these things. And I was literally like, I've been watching him and following him, and I feel like I haven't been this excited about the potential for a player since they drafted LeBron, not even when they drafted Kyrie, um, as awesome as he was. Uh, I just, I literally just watch the game or I don't even, I get not watch the games because I'm not in the market, but I follow the games and in my head, all I'm thinking is, oh, when is this guy going to get hurt and just totally sour the franchise? So I'm hoping that uh, this is not a sign of things to come um, because the comparisons have gotten just totally ridiculous and I'm the, all in on the hype train. The hype but train is wrong. Tim Duncan and David Robinson to Kevin Garnett, to uh, who I think uh, Kevin Garnett is a pretty good comparison, but I feel like Anthony Davis, um, or even Hakeem Olajuwon, because Hakeem, I think, had uh, more blocks uh, than Davis averages um, throughout their careers. But uh, yeah, like I feel like his floor is Anthony Davis, uh, big, who's been injured a decent amount, but is crazy defensive good yeah. uh, and his ceiling is Hakeem Olajuwon and you look at their career stat lines and they're pretty similar um, so you're like well that's not a big difference mm -hmm. but yeah to have a career like that to basically be considered uh, a first ballot hall of famer uh, as a, a rookie here I feel like that's his potential um but then you bring in the injuries and he just has the potential to be like Greg Oden. And <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's not go there yet. Let's, let's not, <laughs> that's, this is the life of a, that's a little, that's that's a little <laughs> extreme, but yeah, I, I can, I can understand a healthy dose of uh, pessimism maybe, but yeah, that, but, that, that uh, I've just relevant. been so optimism. There's just, there's been so much optimism about like, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen and then dude Markin and oh my gosh the towers of power combined with Sexton and Garland just like well we'll find out when we get to overperforming teams so yeah uh, but before we get there let's let's start with uh I would love to hear who you have underperforming teams 
Uh, and, and again, I, I think as we're the way I was thinking about this going into the different teams, it's not necessarily who are objectively the worst teams in the league, but who are um, most oh, no, no, no. Yeah. given given expectations that we kind of pegged like going into this. The, the Houston Rockets were pegged to be absolutely dis- miserable. Um, and we could perhaps even put them in the overperforming category because I feel like one win for them is just beyond my comprehension. I don't know how they got that victory uh, against Oklahoma City. But um, so, yeah, they are the worst team in the league by a million miles, but they're not underperforming. They are they're performing meeting expectations. expectations. <laughs> yep. Meets expectations. Is that like on the chart of oh, underperforming? Overperforming meets expectations. Yeah, well, that's like that, that meets meets expectations is yeah. like a category where we found most of the teams in the city edition jersey. It's like, meh. Eh. No, those were, were underperforming city edition jerseys. Meets expectations was about I don't know three or four. All right, so underperformers uh, for the East. I just have two. Um, Feel free to disagree, but uh, my underperformers in the East are Milwaukee sitting in 11th place, uh, even missing uh, Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton for some extended periods. Um, I didn't expect the East to be – I guess I didn't expect a lot of the teams in the East to be as good as they are, and we'll get to that in the overperformers. But Milwaukee, I feel like, should still be above where they are at and the Atlanta Hawks sitting in 12th place, who I don't think are really missing any key contributors from where they were at last year. Um, I thought they would be better. Um, but I think I texted you this, and I, I think it was clearly obvious. The Hawks are Miami Heat from last year and two years ago. A trip to the finals, trip to the Eastern Conference finals for the Hawks, and then follow it up with just – a very disappointing season. So uh, the Hawks, if they can find their way out of this muck of the Eastern Conference and into some playoffs, could find themselves in a one-and-done, get-blown-out uh, situation. But underperformers, Bucks, Hawks, they sit in outside of the playoff picture in the East, and they were facing each other with a trip to the championships on the line. And just in June, so <laughs> yeah, I think um, I I think part of part of what you're saying about the Hawks though is that they even last year they outperformed like expectations and yes. this year they're reverting back <laughs> to well so more I, average expectations. Not as not as. As such, uh, but <laughs> the uh, technically, yeah, per se, per se. Um, the Hawks overachieved last year in the playoffs, not necessarily in their right. Reg- I mean, their regular season a little bit. Um, what did they get the fourth seed or did they end up the fifth seed against New York? Um, but either way, uh, it was a, a very small overperformance. This, I feel like, it would be a drastic underperformance. Uh, because I feel like they were a lock to be in the playoffs. And right now they're sitting two spots out of the play-in games. So, yeah, I would say if they were in like seventh or eighth seed, they, you know, I wouldn't consider that as underperforming depending on how everybody else is doing. But uh, uh, in- Interesting piece about the Hawks, nine games they played on the road, they have won one away game and lost lost eight they're not they're not doing too well outside of the highlight factory no. and apparently not having many highlights inside the highlight factory either what <laughs> uh, <laughs> one, one note i do want to make about the bucks because i think the bucks the bucks were on my list as well um they have been playing without chris middleton for quite some time i, I think they've, yeah. they've had they've had some injuries um but i did I think I expected them to to come out of the gate stronger and um, yeah, just just kind of still come out and hungry 
I, and and I think as we'll talk about in a minute, you know, Bucks were looking at a six and eight record. Um, they've gone one and four at home, <laughs> and have have won uh, five out of nine away games. So kind of a different tale compared to the Hawks there. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think the Bucks like six and eight. It's not a horrible record, but eleventh seed in the East is not not where I would have pegged them. Fourteen games in. Yep. So you got anybody else in the East that seems to be underperforming to your expectations? So for me, I mean, the other team in the East for me is the Sixers. Um, eight and six record. They're so just above 500, sitting at seventh, seventh seed in the Eastern Conference right now. I think that I so I, I know Joel is basically like playing every other game, which which is part of this. And he's he's not, I think I expected him to get more minutes, or I expected, um, I expected them to almost like be rejuvenated by playing without Ben Simmons. <laughs> and, and I think that they, they're still that cloud that's just hanging over the roster and, and really the whole organization, the whole city of Philadelphia, I think is ready, yeah. ready to see that, that cloud go away. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that they would have, been much better than eight and six and and I feel like some of the games where I've been following them they've had some just really bad losses like 20 plus point losses where it's (laughs) not competitive and and maybe I mean maybe those are are some of the games that Embiid is out um so yeah they're they're another to sort of piggyback on that, I would, I guess, more say that he himself is underperforming. I don't know if – I haven't been following super closely if he's been sitting out because of injury. Um, like, they said they were going to rest him the first night of a back-to-back, but then he didn't play the second night either. And I was like, that seems strange. Like, so is he hurt? Because does he really need this rest? Is he not in shape? Because I expected after him – uh, really being the front runner for MVP last year and going out with an injury, I feel like I was expecting him to come out just, you know, full steam ahead to be like, no, I am the MVP. I should have got it last year. I got hurt this year. I'm taking it. It's mine. And we haven't seen that yet. So uh, nobody's really mentioning him in terms of MVP discussion. He hasn't been playing every game um, or even every other game. Um, so, I don't know. That's uh, interesting to keep an eye on. Yeah, and, and one, just one other piece about the Sixers. I, I would say a player who has been completely overperforming is Tyrese Maxey. I mean, the, the dude is – some of just the points like he's averaging right now, it, it's insane. So, it it has been – uh, just really cool to see him kind of light up in a lot of these games. And I think one other piece about the Sixers' performance so far is how much more they struggle defensively without Ben Simmons. So I, I think that that is a, like he brings so much more of a defensive anchor or, or he's just so versatile on defense that, that if, that's is something – that because he can't shoot? <laughs> Did he has to focus on defense so much or maybe a maybe topic for another day, <laughs> but that's, that's going to be something I'm, I'm going to want to look more closely at as the season goes on. It's like, how does this Philly defense uh, evolve without Ben Simmons? Um, I, I was thinking back to the games when they played, they had those, that first prime time, like Nick Sixers game and they ended <laughs> up just getting completely punked by, by the Knicks. Uh-huh. So All right. those are our underperformers in the East. We got any out West? So for me, in, out in the West, I've got one big bad team in LA: the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers. Underperformers, make your case. <laughs> totally underperforming. 
And some of this is probably, I just love all the kind of hate and shade they're getting for all the stars and like wash ups that they have on this roster. Yeah. Um, LeBron, okay, LeBron is injured. But to me, this, this team, again, like so much of this hype for the Lakers squad is like, oh, you know, we've, we've got the Nets, we've got like super team in the East. And then the Lakers are still very much the super team in the West. And they have not been playing at all to that level and have just been <laughs> all over the place. I mean, some just just some so yeah. <laughs> you definitely you definitely won your case. I uh, I didn't originally have them on there just because of LeBron's injury, but I, they definitely have to be on the underperformers in the West because um, I feel like they've blown like two 20 point leads to like the Oklahoma city thunder. Um, they, their losses aren't losses to like the good teams. Their losses to like bad teams and embarrassing showings like, uh, to the Minnesota Timberwolves, like even without LeBron, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook with Carmelo Anthony, either coming off the bench or taking that starting role, you should be able to beat teams, especially when you're up by like 20 points. So, um, we got destroyed by the Bulls last night. They're, they're eking out wins against my horrible Spurs. I mean, Bro, they got destroyed by their cast offs of Lonzo Ball <laughs> and then Alice Caruso just like left, <laughs> ditched them in the past and went. So, yeah. Um, you had one. I have uh, one more team that I think is underperforming in the West, and that's got to be the Portland Trailblazers. Huh. Uh, I feel like the West has like a handful of like ridiculously good teams, then a handful of like absolutely miserable teams, and the Blazers are like bordering on just being part of that group of like terrible, miserable like. Not to say that the West doesn't have a lot of depth, um, but like those top like five teams seem like really, really good. And then it just seems like some of these other teams just literally have zero chance. But mm -hmm. the Blazers are sort of middling around down there, flirting with just being on a season of disaster. And I feel like they didn't lose anybody. And McCollum has been playing – every game like last year he was hurt a lot um the last several years actually and they've performed better but Dane Lillard his numbers are down I, I feel like McCollum is averaging more points than Lillard right now um so I would just put them in underperforming they are teetering on the brink of possibly a disaster season and maybe that's because Dane doesn't really want to be there um he's ready to get out or trying to force their hand into bringing somebody else in. Um, I'm not sure. So I have them as underperforming. They're in about the ninth seed right now. Um, footnote, I would put the New Orleans Pelicans in underperforming because I expected them to be in playoff contention or at least play in games. And I think to be my 10th seed, I guess I didn't realize that Zion Williamson was basically just going to not play all year. So uh, they have doubled the output of Houston, but that only accounts for two wins. So uh, New Orleans is in a state of chaos. Yeah, I think we both had them like right on the cusp in terms of playing for, for yeah. that final seed. And they're, they're not even close. No, no. I mean, close. Even if Zion comes back healthy, I just can't see them making up the amount of ground after this abysmal start. So uh, I would maybe look to see them being sellers towards a trade deadline, maybe moving Brandon Ingram, maybe I don't think they have much else that <laughs> interests people, but maybe there's a, another guy or two that, that might be worthwhile uh, as a trade deadline acquisition as for a team that's headed to the playoffs. <laughs> So we started started with our criticism, our, our negatives, underperforming. 
let's move to our overperforming in uh, yeah. more more exciting storylines to me. And, and who is think, exceeding expectations in the NBA this year? Many conference, many teams in the East. That's for sure. Dude, that's yes. That's my but, banner. Number one is lots of teams in Eastern Conference. <laughs> I narrowed it down to three teams, but like, yes, everywhere you look, you're like, wow, this team is playing really well. Has some key victories. Wow, this team's really well. Like, in my head, I've got two or three teams that I didn't write down that could easily have have made the list in the East. So yeah, uh, let's give me one. Who you got? Well. The way I want to kick this off is by saying, if you would have told, showed me the Eastern Conference standings, the top five teams, even six months ago, I would have said, you're crazy, you're smoking something, you can't be for real. We have <laughs> the Washington Wizards sitting on top of the Eastern Conference at 10 and 3. That's my, my overperforming number one. That's there. I mean, number it, one. It, they, they take list. the case. Wizards. And then second for me is the Cavaliers. That's in terms of where I peg them, where they would be sitting in the Eastern Conference to where they are now. And then third is um, the Bulls. Those, there you go. Those are, those are, my, those are my top three. <laughs> and, 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 and I do want to throw in an honorable mention. My honorable mention would be the Hornets. Like the Hornets have, they're they're the above five hundred. Hornets, who the thought? Yeah, they're above five hundred. There is quite a buzz into the season with the squad. Is, uh, is there yeah. is there actually down there in Charlotte? Is there a lot of people that are kind of hype on the season? Or yeah, lots of lots of uh, lots of ball jerseys. Or is everybody just more thrilled that Cam Newton's finally back? Oh, I, I'm telling you, man, there was. I was talking with some guys at a workout this morning, like, oh, talk about a weekend. You know, we had we had the Hornets beating the the Warriors here at home. So so that game, Cam Newton takes down one of the best teams in the NFL. He scores two touchdowns and just goes, I'm back, I'm back, and proceeds to get uh, flagged. Like has anybody has anybody done that? Has anybody scored yeah. a touchdown in the NFL and done the New York Knicks like Bing Bong? Bing, bing Bong, bong. <laughs> just just find the closest camera, just go Bing Bong. Oh, that'd be so good. No, they, for sure. There's 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 a lot of hype around this Hornets team so far. I mean, like usually out of the gate, this squad is nowhere close to to five hundred. And there's just a stretch where we're like hoping, praying, desperation that we'll like win enough games down the stretch to just try to have a, a throwing shot at the at the playoffs. But they're um, I know they're eight they're eight technically eighth seed in the East right now. But given all the other teams that are playing super well in the East, I'm overperforming in my book. Yeah, the Hornets that definitely have some key victories. Uh, off to a hot start um you almost want to say just because of the hype <laughs> that the knicks are overperforming but i think they're right about where they, they should be yeah. so it's like but there's so much hype that like the knicks are back baby but like yeah they're just like what fifth or sixth in the east or something like that which is right where they were last year <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, about about right, about right there. And what, what, so what's so intriguing about these teams in the East is, you know, like last Wednesday we had the Wizards squaring off against the Cavs in, and it, was that the game that was like an absolute phenomenal finish? Like it was so back and forth, you know, it came down to one of the last, I think it came down to the last shot. But on paper, I would have looked at this game at the beginning of the season and been like, come on. But it's super competitive games. Yeah, that's so. a un, that's an untelevised game because. <laughs> but then it was like the winner would have been in first place in the East. Yeah. So, <laughs> just just wild, and and I I love it because as you mentioned before, we have I feel like there's more um, 
there's more parity in the Western Conference in the sense that really, really to me, it's just the Warriors that have completely jumped, like just shot out of the gate and are so doing so much better than I would have thought they were. But but the rest of the pecking order to me is it's it's very reasonable. Like yeah, right. I, I kind of figured these would be the top six teams. It, it's it's lined up yeah. pretty close to my expectation. In the East, Phoenix, Denver, Utah. Yeah, and and then we look at the Eastern Conference and it's completely flipped. Like the script, it's ridiculous out the window. Yeah. And if you would have looked even like I don't know four days ago, like. Brooklyn wouldn't even have been up in the top five. Like, they were down low. So, it's like they had a slow start. They're figuring things out. Uh, I think they're getting better. Um, but, yeah, there's just – yeah, I had the same same trio. Wizard, Wizards, Bulls, Cavs. Just... So, so this, is, <clears throat> this is my question that I want you to help me think through, Justin. With these teams, in the, specifically in the East, that are completely – outperforming expectations <laughs> is this sustainable do you think do you think these teams will um i mean we talked a little bit about the Cavs, but do you think these these teams are, are legit do you think what we're seeing is representative of how they will perform the rest of the season or not yes and no so the Cavs, i think are going to get this injury bug here i think they're going to hit a stretch of uh, not very many wins. And I think they're going to fall back to where they were uh, perhaps expected, maybe a little bit more. Maybe they end up being able to get one of those play in games um, where I feel like I said uh, in our predictions that they would make the playoffs next year, um, but they could possibly be in that play in games this year. Um, so a little bit better than I thought, but not sustaining a top five team in the East. Um, the Bulls, I think, yes. I feel like they have components and pieces that, and players that are good enough to help them sustain. I have no idea what is happening in Washington. Like, <laughs> I just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what is going on there. I'm completely baffled. Um, I feel like there's just no way they can sustain this because last year they were, were they like the worst team in the league? I mean, no, I mean, they had, they were, they had a terrible start to last season. Didn't they fight all the way back to maybe get a play in spot? Yeah. They or did were, they miss out by one game? I cannot remember. Um, I just, so I just looked this up. They finished the season 25 and 47, the ninth seed. So they played the Hornets. I think I think they beat the Hornets. Twenty five and forty seven. Yep. No. They 20. were the ninth seed and made the playoffs, and they were twenty games under five hundred. Yeah, bro. No. Here. Yeah, no, you have to be looking at the wrong thing. This is a mistake. <laughs> East round one. 76ers Wizards. The Wizards, they won their play in, they won the play in tournament and got the eight seed, or not won the play in tournament, uh, but. Okay, okay. I'm, my Googling skills are failing me. <laughs> Because I, I was I was looking at the 2020 playoffs instead of 2021. I still can't believe they were the nine seed and they were 20 games under 500 two years ago. That doesn't even make sense. Okay, so here we go. 2021, Washington Wizards finished with a record of 34 wins, 38 losses to claim the eighth seed. Okay. And yeah, we, we had the them going up against the Sixers and they um lost in five games in the first round. Well, anyways, I feel like that's who they actually are. Um 
or even worse. Like, I don't know. I, they added, yeah, I didn't even have them finishing top 10. Like, I, they added Kyle Kuzma and Montrez Harrell. Like, <laughs> well, let's not forget about Spencer Dinwiddie. And uh, who else do they have? No, I, 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 mean, I mean, they have Bradley Beal. I just mean, who do they add that would make them so much better than they were? And we're saying it's because of Spencer Dinwiddie, Kyle Kuzma, and Montrez Harrell took this team from a basement dweller to the best team in the East. I'm not buying in just yet. Um, well, so we have Rui Hachimura up and coming. This is what his second or third season in the league. Max. This, uh, all I'm saying is I, I'm, I'm a little bit more optimistic about let, 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 Let's let's put this on wax, Justin. Who finishes with a better <laughs> record, the Cavs or the Wizards? I'm going Wizards. But what say you? If <laughs> no, 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 no ifs. <laughs> just, I, I'm just up. saying, if the Cavs right now were healthy. I would feel much better about saying the Cavs would finish with a better record. Yeah, but, but, the, Sexton, but the Wizards are going to have injuries too. It, the Wizards will have their own injuries. They're, you, you're gonna, so they're top two players. So Bradley Beal tears his meniscus and I don't know. Dinwiddie blows a knee out. I don't know. Has ligament damage. I don't. No, but but uh, okay. So let let's just like suspend what we think will happen with injuries. Who's going to finish the season with a better record, Wizards or Cavs? I, I'm sticking with the Wizards. I have to say, based on right now, the Wizards. But if I feel like I already admitted that the Cavs were not going to be sustainable, so. If how much do you want to put down? I say the Bulls finish with a better record than the Wizards this year. I, I agree. Yeah, for sure. I mean, okay. I, mean <laughs> I, I think I'm with you on that one because I think the Bulls, <laughs> I think the Bulls have the best roster out of out of all three. Of okay, so we agree on all three fronts as to like how this will round out. All right. Yeah. Very good. On to the West. Overperformers. You only have one out west. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we can both agree Golden State is completely outperforming expectations. Or Clay sure. Thompson is not back yet. They have the best record in the NBA. They look totally unstoppable again. I don't know how they freaking do it every freaking time, but they like have homegrown talent in Jordan Poole and somehow gotten what Andrew Wiggins was supposed to be like. 10 years ago or whenever he was drafted and has just been a total bum and lazy for the last decade. Like I just, it's so frustrating for a team that's literally gave up everything to get Durant had like no assets to get anything looked dead in the water the last like two years due to injuries and the fact that they had no way to get anybody. They had to trade uh, what's-his-face to get Andrew Wiggins in somehow, which didn't even make sense at the time. Who was that guy? He's second fiddle with Carl Anthony Towns in Minnesota right now. D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell played at Ohio State. I'm like, I can tell everything about this, but I can't tell you his name. <laughs> and, like <laughs> – it's not Julius Randle. It's the D'Angelo <laughs> Russell. Um, they like somehow got his terrible contract. Were able to get rid of it for Andrew Wiggins' terrible contract. I feel like Wiseman is hurt and not even playing. Yeah. Clay Thompson yeah. is not back yet. Like how, triple single is triple singling his mind out right now, and I just don't understand why. <laughs> like. Why are they the best team in basketball? Clay Thompson's going to come back, and basically the West is a wrap. Like, 
I, I, I'm with it you makes me sick. My... I'm sick. Yeah. I'm sick to my stomach. I <laughs> see. I, I share a lot of the same sentiment, just in the sense of how much I wanted to see this dynasty fall apart, burn, like be buried at the depths of the ocean, <laughs> and and here they are. But I I want to see them. I think they're going to revert a little bit more to the to the median to more of my expectations, but that's when Clay comes back, and that's when like Wiseman is healthy again, and that's when they just continue to have guys step in and play well. So I I, I think that I'm st- I'm still gonna take uh, be a, be a little more pessimistic about this team just. I, I don't think they're going to finish, you know, first or second in the West. All right. So they're, they're still, they're still going to end up being much higher than where I pegged them. Bigger bet. <coughs> Who finishes higher in their respective conference, the Warriors or the Bulls? Well, and when you say in their respective conference, you're saying by seeding or by record. No, by seeding. That's why in their conference, if I, yeah, yeah, I would have said who's going to have a better record. No, who's going to have a better seed at the end of the year? Do you think the Warriors continue to outperform and have a higher seed in the West than the Bulls would end up getting in the East? See, well, that's that's where we go back to that parody piece of, I think in the, in the West we're gonna have again our our top six, or we're gonna have Suns, we're gonna have Mavs, Nuggets, Jazz, Warriors, and then kind of that I think that six could could kind of be a top up a toss up. But I think Warriors are going to at least they're they're not gonna be any lower than fifth, and that's like. I think I think even fourth is is where I'm gonna peg so them. At. So they're hosting a they're gonna host the first round of the series. I'm, I'm going to peg them. Coming. I'm gonna peg them as fourth seed in the West, which which sickens me. I had them as like a seventh seed, and they're gonna have, they're gonna be hosting a freaking. Oh, this is disgusting. So so it's, in in a very long winded way to answer your question, Justin, I'm going I'm going Warriors. Warriors with a better seed. I think the Bulls are going to be. You don't think the Bulls will finish top four in the East? Nope. I I think I see the Bulls being. I'm going to put them fifth seed in the East. All right. So yeah, we got to put that on wax. I have uh, I have one more team that I think is outperforming at least my expectations out west, uh, and that is. The other team out in LA, the Clippers, without mm. Kawhi, uh, way off P, um, only shows up uh, <laughs> in <laughs> April, May, and June. But uh, right now, in uh, October, November, he is, uh, I would say, pretty close to the top three. He's got to be. A, I would say maybe the number three in, in MVP early candidacy. Um, people are going with the KD Steph uh, top two mix and match. I'd say Steph would have to be ahead just because he's got his team with less of its stars playing than KD matched up with Harden. So I feel like he's doing more with less in the West than KD is. So uh, I would say Paul George, he's got the Clippers in the sixth seed, and uh, he has been having some ridiculous games. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give them a little shout out for overperforming to my expectations so far. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that that honorable mention. And just, I, I thought that we'd just see them kind of bomb out of the Western Conference. And they're not anywhere close doing much better than that yeah <laughs> uh, so speaking of katie and the nets and how our mutual distaste for the warriors succeeding we have the warriors up 10 against the nets in brooklyn right now so um warriors should win this game right 
What they will. What's, what's um, our man? What's our man Draymond up to? Oh, this. Listen to the stat. Oh, this is beautiful. Two rebounds, seven assists, four points. This man. <laughs> this man is making a statement. He's he's making a statement. <laughs> I think he's. Uh, I think he's. Yeah, I got to check the numbers, but I think he's got six or seven triple singles on the season so far. So we're gonna up, up to, I, I think we're at, we're at like a close to a we're getting we're probably close to last year's average. So we gotta we'll have to check the counter, check the triple single counter at Taco Ball Tuesday on Twitter, and uh, let's find right. out how our main man, Mister Money Twenty Three Green, is doing. <laughs> So it's just so mysterious how he can be posting those numbers and the Warriors can be winning so many games. It's so frustrating, but you know what? It's, it's hopefully it's not going to last, but uh, Justin, this has been, this has been fun. I, I really like, you know, thinking about the parity between these conferences and putting some bold predictions on wax in terms of where, where teams will, will finish and some of the storylines that we're going to be following. The Cavs, injuries, uh, a lot of these Eastern Conference teams to see if they can keep up this just frantic pace that they've come out for the for the first part of the season here. Yeah. Any any other uh, any other words or uh, insights to share before we sign off? That's all I got this week. It was a good one. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the NBA season is off to a ridiculous start i'm very excited to, that, to keep following this so and that reminds me i almost forgot we have a very we'll, we'll um we've got a little bit of time before our nuggets heat matchup coming up on monday november 29th so we'll uh, <laughs> need to get into a little bit of that next week if we uh still catch up it's just previewing that wonderful matchup and uh (laughs) what could be another brawl in the making or two bros just make up and handle it like 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 real men we'll see yeah by throwing down and and getting these guys involved too the real men got beef (laughs) i i can't wait to see these guys they're gonna be at the game and i fully expect them to just be dressed up like complete gangsters it's gonna be great. <laughs> all right brother all right, my brother another good boss taco ball Yo, tuesday taco ball baby adios